uh, that came up in a poll last week. Uh, the questions related to branding and how to improve your social media so that you can track opportunities and customers to your business. So I'm going to wait uh, a little bit more just to wait to see if more people will join in. And then I'll get started. Hi, sorry, it looked like there was um, a bad connection. Um, so basically, let's start off with uh, what branding means. It basically means your reputation and how people perceive you. Uh, on your bio of all of your social media sites, whether you're on Instagram or LinkedIn, you want to cover who you are, what you do, where you're located, uh, the kind of people that you want to help or the people that you're helping now. And you might even want to include, if you don't have any awards or um, anything in general, if you're bare, bare, st starting new to business, maybe you want to add a degree or that you have a certificate or maybe that you did a blog on XYZ news site. That's a really good way to kind of show uh, how long you've been doing it and uh, your certifications and education. And um, if you're a B2C, meaning your customers are like Jane or uh, Sharon, um, you want to say something like, um, I know uh, Marsari Reed, you are going to be doing some retail there. So you can say, um, I am a CEO of XYZ Incorporated, for example, helping women feel beautiful with uh, Reed, sort of helping women um, tidy up their home or make their home more presentable with XYZ. So you want to start off with that with a bio. If you want to put your location, that's fine. I decided to remove my location only because um, I was noticing before that people in my city were kind of gravitating more to me. And now that I removed my location because I can pretty much help people from home, uh, I'm finding that more people in like Europe, Asia, and Africa are following me because it doesn't look like I'm just kind of based specifically for people in my city. So you, you want to think about that. Definitely add a website if you have a blog, you can add that link. And in your bio, try to uh, point down to it with a thumb, a finger that goes like this or an arrow that goes down and say something like uh, link in bio or to, um, to purchase my product or to check out my, check out my online store. You kind of want to do something like that. Um, sometimes people are very weary about um, uh, links, especially if they don't really know a company or a brand, so you want to do that. Uh, in your name, uh, if you have your name, and it looks like you have uh, just kind of like the name of your business, kind of try to put in uh, a key word that people are definitely looking for. So, for example, I have Makita, and then I have a little space, and then branding consultant. So when people are looking for branding consultant and Instagram and LinkedIn, for example, they'll find me. I'll come up, and because YG Writer, I noticed that I'm one of the few uh, writers that come up when, when you put the, the word writer in Instagram, for example. So you want to pay attention to that. You also want to look at the little highlights at the bottom of your Instagram, for example, and have an about. So maybe it might be a screenshot of the about page on your website, or maybe it's a 15-second video. Uh, yeah, that you definitely want to do that because um, if you kind of – when I just put Makita, nobody knows, like the whole world doesn't know me yet. So they're not looking for Makita, they're looking for a branding consultant. And on the highlights, you're going to see a little circle under your Instagram, which has a, a little um, a cross in it. Uh, you can, I believe you can put your stories on that. So if you put a story, and maybe it's a 15-second video just explaining who you are, you can add that to one of the highlights and you can say, about me. And then you have another highlight, and it says, I don't know, upcoming event. And all of these things are things that you're adding on your stories. So you really want to treat your social media page like a website. I say that because um, a lot of people don't look at my website for whatever reason. They either don't have time. Maybe they look at my profile and they say, okay, she has enough information for me to go by that I don't have to do additional research. So treat all of your social media sites. Hi, Ryan. Thanks for joining Treat all of your social media sites like a website. Make sure that you have, you know, some testimonials on there. Absolutely. On your highlights, put your about, put a sample, put a piece of a product. Hi, Great. Thanks for uh, joining, David. I appreciate it. And just make sure that you treat uh, everything that you do on social media 
Thanks for joining uh, Zeneta Advertising. I appreciate it. So right now I'm focusing on the topics of branding and how to improve your social media pages. I was telling uh, the people before that uh, make sure that you have uh, in the bio who you are, who you help, what you do, and where you're located. Make sure that in your name, don't just put your name, but put keywords. So for example, on my uh, name it says Makita, and then it says Branding Consultant. And the reason why I do that is the world doesn't know who Makita is yet, but people are looking for a branding consultant. So it's an easy way. It's an easy way to find you. Um, your page. Treat your social media like a website. Make sure that you're informing people, you're educating people, you are entertaining people. And I say that because I have a short attention span, and most people do. So when I come on somebody's social media page, and I, it's confusing. Like they, they see that they're a doctor. But all I see are pictures of their family or pictures of their um, a sunrise or vacations. And I'm thinking to myself, is this person trying to be a social influencer or is this a local doctor down the street that I can depend on for health services? So really treat your page, cover the who, what, where, when, why, and maybe even how, and do that in the form of videos, quotes, make sure that if you have customer testimonials, politely ask people, hey, you know, I, I got that message, the email that you really like my product and service. Can you do a 15-second video saying who you are, where you are, um, and how much you really like this product and share that on your page as well? There's nothing wrong with a little bit of self-promotion uh, in addition to adding value by sharing tips and advice, entertaining and educating. Make sure that you're building a brand that also shows uh, social proof because uh, anybody can put on their bio that they've you know, accumulated $100 million or they help their clients accumulate $500 million, but if there's no social proof to back it up, can we really believe that person? So kind of think about that. I was saying earlier, ladies and gentlemen, that, hi, Mojo Joel Pickles, thanks for joining. I was saying earlier that uh, branding is a reputation. It is what people think about you, but to some degree, you can control that by the content that you share on the internet. Um, well, as I'm going along, if, if you have any questions, feel free to post them below. I might be able to help other people too that might have the same question in mind. So I was saying earlier, um, what I do, as you can tell, I take some of my TikTok videos and I put it online. You can probably tell that I'm sharing more videos and this is why. I always try to think about the psychology of all of my followers. We're in a quarantine right now, and yes, this is true. A lot more businesses are opening up, but there are people who feel isolated right now, and they feel lonely. And when they see my video, when they see your video, they feel more connected to you. And trust me, uh, on most social media pages, videos get more engagement than uh, a stock photo or a quote, or even a, a selfie is very nice too. Um, so try to take advantage of IGTV, I know for some of you it might be a little bit, um, a little bit, uh, you know, a little scary to do that. But if you don't want to be the face of your brand, try to get an employee to be the face of your brand. If you can afford to get a local spokesperson or somebody in your community that is doing well, uh, try to get them to be the face of your brand. You can do really free uh, videos on the internet where you can do videos that have cartoons in them. Uh, but if you're comfortable with getting in front of a camera, don't worry about how you look. I explained uh, last week in one of my TikTok videos that I didn't unbraid my hair. I didn't even put on lipstick. I looked like I just woke up in the morning, and that video got more. It was like my second top uh, trending video on TikTok. And a lot of my videos here on uh, Instagram, uh, I'm not trying to be a social influencer. I'm not trying to portray myself as a model. I just want to get out the best content possible and help people with every post that I do. And I know some of you have probably saw some of my posts with LinkedIn. If you are offering a product, a service, you should definitely be on LinkedIn right now. I say that because LinkedIn and TikTok they have or, uh, an organic algorithm, which means uh, Instagram 10 years ago, the reason why you see some people who have hundreds of thousands of followers or millions of followers, 
unless they're um, a celebrity or like a real social influencer, they got there because they got on Instagram when it first started. And we all know that when these apps first begin, our posts trend better than they do six years later, five years later. So the reason why I'm consistently trending on LinkedIn is because I post a few times a day. Of course, I'm adding value, but I'm constantly on the platform every day because I know that I have a better reach on LinkedIn and TikTok than I do on Facebook right now. Where on Facebook, you have to you have to pay to get great reach. And that, unfortunately, that's the reality of social media branding is you want to get on the apps that are uh, offering a greater reach that people are not paying too much attention to because those are the, the platforms that you can get more eyes on your videos, on your posts, and you can really shine and potentially become an influencer without even trying. Um, if, if anybody has any questions about branding, I'll get right into uh, what I mentioned that I would share, which is my before and after. So on LinkedIn and on Instagram, back in the day, okay, so I was listening to Gary Vee, and he said that as well as TikTok took and LinkedIn. Hi, Jen. Thanks, thanks for joining. Yes. TikTok, I did a video on TikTok uh, about two weeks ago. It got 41,000 views. And, okay, it got 41,000 views. That's the highest view I've ever got. I've never had that much reach, uh, ladies and gentlemen, on Instagram or LinkedIn. Even if I'm trending on LinkedIn, I don't think I'll get that much reach. But let's take a look here. Jan wants to join in. Thanks for joining, Jan. Hi. So... Let's take a look here if, if it will work because Jan wants to get on the, on the video and ask a question. Hey, Jan, how are you? I can't see you. Um, maybe you might want to reverse your camera. Hey, Jan, can you hear me? I can't see you. It looks like your camera is covered. So I'll keep going as Jan uh, tries to fix that. So, uh, yeah, so if you have a product or a service, I think you definitely, hey, Jan, for some reason I can't see you, but you definitely want to be on TikTok. You want to be on LinkedIn. You want to share more videos on uh, Instagram. Um, Instagram IGTV is really great. It's great uh, because people are also searching for content. I can't say that it's as effective as YouTube and Google, but you definitely want to uh, share more videos, everyone. I say that again, we're in a quarantine, people are feeling isolated, people with families are feeling isolated because so many things are shut down, but when they see your video, they feel like you're their best friend. I'm gonna close this jam because I can't hear you and uh, the video looks a little, okay, thanks. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, please um, share it below. So my before and after is uh, on Instagram, I used to just share personal stuff. People knew me um, as like a writer and I was doing marketing, but it was really confusing because I was just simply sharing um, pictures and vacations and little quotes, stock images, and I was sitting at about 365 followers the last week of December. And then I sat there and I'm like, I've been helping companies for the past six years with branding. Why am I not using the same advice for my clients? So I started changing it up. I got rid of all the sunrise photos. I stopped sharing um, photos of me on vacation unless it, I brought it back to helping people solve a problem. And I made it more about them than I did about me. And that's when I started seeing more inquiries uh, by messages. I saw more engagement on my social posts. I was able to close more customers on Instagram. On LinkedIn, the same thing. My before was I used to just post one blog every day. And I was hoping that that would help me out. And it did. I, I'm not going to, I'm going to be transparent. I did get opportunities on LinkedIn. My highest paid opportunities have been on LinkedIn. But it wasn't working because I wasn't uh, socially engaging with people and building a brand and really speaking more into what I did every day. And again, the last week of December, I started changing it up on LinkedIn. I started change, sharing more how to videos, like how to post content, how to um, improve your branding and stuff like that. So Ryan asks, how much time per day do you put into your social media? That's a good question, Ryan. I just recently started only engaging on social media after I post something. And uh, I used to spend hours on social media, but I can't do that anymore because my business is growing. So my advice to you is when you post something, 
Hey, Iconic Junk Removal, thanks for joining. When you post something, Ryan, and to everybody that's on the line, start engaging with people's posts. Start uh, going into your timeline. And I say that because when you post something, the first hour is really, really important. Instagram and most of the other apps are checking to see how many likes are you getting, how many people are commenting, how many people are you communicating with. Hey, and so I would say dedicate between... 30 minutes to an hour per day sporadically, but my strategy is I only um, I only jump on when I have to add a story, when I have to do a post, and then that's when, um, and here's another strategy, Ryan and everybody else, to improve your engagement, because the more that you're on this app, the more that the apps see that you're communicating, the more they'll push your content out. And in return, that improves your branding, that improves your ability to get more followers and to grow your brand and your business. So I would definitely say between 30 minutes to an hour a day. Um, for every person that likes my photo, I know it sounds time consuming, I go on their page, I like something of theirs. Hey, Andrew, thanks for joining. I like something of theirs and I post a comment. For every person that follows me, I just started sending just a message saying, hey, hey, thank, thank you for joining Marketing Designs. I just recently uh, started doing this thing where if somebody follows me, I actually uh, will go into their direct message. I'll say hi. Thanks for following me. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out. Have a good day. I don't spam their DMs. I'm not going to say, hey, check out my new blog. Check out my new blog and purchase my product. No, no, no. Please don't do that because that, that really sends the wrong message. It looks like you're in selling mode. So, you know, when somebody likes your stuff, go into the page and like it back. I know it's time consuming, everybody, but if you just push out content, you just hear a video, a blog, a quote every day, and you're not engaging with your followers, it's not going to improve your ability to grow your following, and it's definitely not going to help you get more reach. People buy people. When it comes to branding, it's about online reputation, but people invest in people. Uh, what are your favorite brands, everybody? Uh, if you want, put your favorite brand down, and I'll give you an example as to why they're successful. Um, you and I both know that uh, aside from COVID-19, a lot of companies are going out of business because branding wasn't their first priority. J. Crew, Neiman Marcus, Toys R Us, Sears, all these companies. Um, Virgin Atlantic, I'm sorry to say it, but these companies were great at some, at some point, but they weren't focusing on branding, right? They were putting out content, they were getting customers, they really got big for themselves, but then I don't even remember Virgin Atlantic unless I see Russell Branson's face on YouTube, like seriously. So the big brands, I know somebody earlier mentioned Gary Vaynerchuk, that guy is winning. Um, different com people are, Michael Jordan, he's been around for how long, two decades? He's winning, and he doesn't even play basketball anymore. So think about that. Like, think about the fact that you want to build a brand so that when you retire, people are still talking about you. People still want to purchase your products and services. It can take some time to build that kind of a brand, ladies and gentlemen, but really think about that. And the, during a recession and during rough times, the companies that remain successful are the ones that put branding in the forefront, the ones that put branding as a high priority. So I know a lot of the things I was telling you, like fixing your bio to answer who you are, where you are, who you help, where you're located, your, you know, some little things that you can share, like awards you got or certificates or a degree if you're fairly new, and then dropping that a uh, website or YouTube uh, link by putting a little, by putting a little, um, sorry guys, by putting a little uh, button that says click below to link on your, to a link on your bio or a link on your website or your YouTube channel. Promote yourself. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Um, I know sometimes it's really nervous to get in front of a camera, but people really want to see your face or a face of somebody in your company or a face of a representative. Uh, branding is so important. I really want to stress this to each and every one of you, even if you're on the line and you're an employee. The world is changing. It's unfortunate, but a lot of companies are going to start hiring more freelancers and contractors and businesses versus employees. And if you're an employee on the line, get your branding together. Because if you're online on Instagram and on TikTok and on LinkedIn, you can get more reach as far as getting a job, getting more clients if people know who you are. So I really want to stress that. Uh, please save this live video. Absolutely, I'll do that for you. Does anyone have any questions about social media best practices to get more customers, branding tips for success, anything? Don't be shy. 
Um, we're all here to learn, and I'm sure your question is probably on the top of somebody's mind. Um, uh, as, as you guys may or may not be typing, um, some of the places as far as social media where consumers are living in 2020 based on uh, research that I found online, um, YouTube, uh, Instagram, Facebook, um, these are, and LinkedIn are definitely the places. So uh, TRN Xena Advertising asks, uh, what if you're an agency, do you still need a face? Um, you can use a mascot. If there's any way that you can get an illustrator or maybe you can find something free online where you can create like a mascot, you can use a mascot. You can even do videos without putting your face, um, you know, generic videos that you can pay a couple of dollars for online for with somebody from Fiverr, or you can find, like, if you even have Wix.com, there are free templates to do videos. You don't necessarily have to show your face, but if you have an employee that's comfortable, that's really an extrovert and really knows how to get a message across, or if you maybe just want to hide behind a cartoon character or just a a character or a mascot, I definitely would say that. You don't have to show your face. It really depends on how comfortable you are. I share my face because even though I'm an, in, uh, an introvert, I, I don't want to pay somebody to represent my brand. And maybe when my business gets bigger, I will do that. But right now, um, I want to share who I am and I want to do that every day. Where am I from? So I was born and raised in Mississauga outside of Toronto. And um, I have African and uh, Caribbean background. So somebody's asking, one thing I'm hesitant is that I want to grow as a company, but on LinkedIn I have to grow as an individual. So this is a question for market design. So you can build a business profile on LinkedIn. Um, and on a personal note, you can share your quotes, your blogs, your images, your videos on LinkedIn. And I think that it's good to have a business profile, but I must say that with the business profiles, they don't get much, as much engagement as a personal profile. But for big companies like Microsoft, of course, their business profile, the whole world knows who they are, so they get more engagement. But don't be afraid to open up um, a business profile and use your personal profile. You try to post several times a day early in the morning when your audience is available. And that's how you can kind of get this, the, the ball rolling with LinkedIn. But um, don't underestimate the power of LinkedIn. I see celebrities on there doing webinars like rappers, and I see um, Hollywood actors on there. I see uh, more uh, personal development uh, leaders on there. Everybody's on there, so try to take advantage of that. So does anyone else have any questions about um, social media, branding, anything? Drop your questions below. Yes, you're right. Uh, business pages don't get much engagement. However, I have 470 followers. Awesome. So your followers and your connections can grow the more you post and the more you show up every day. Thanks for joining, Psycho Megson. So the more you show up every day, the more you share videos on all of your social media platforms, everybody, the more engagement you get, the more trust. So think of every um, video that you share, every two-minute video. That's like kind of like a two-minute conversation. And branding takes time. Sometimes uh, it takes several years for people to um, – for people to get familiar with your brand, but if you show up every day, um, and I know in some of my posts I say, do things your competitors don't. So I see some, I see photographer on here, I see a graphic designer on here, I see somebody who's selling wreaths on here, advertising, uh, etc. I see a social influencer on here, junk removal. So and everybody, think about your top uh, companies in your industry, and think about what they're doing. Uh, do what they're not doing. Of course, in a professional manner, and I say that because that's another way to stand out. That's another way to build your brand. Try not to photocopy or recycle what everybody else is doing because that might not help you from the long run. You really want to find a way to stand out online. So everybody, um, looks like nobody has any more questions below. So I'm going to close this, um, I'm going to close this up. Thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate all the likes and the comments and the messages that I get from each and every one of you. Have no fear. I'm going to upload this. Okay, so do my pictures need to have some background on my Instagram page? No, uh, you can share uh, videos just organically. You can use cheap editing. I use capwings.com. 
And I think that as long as your video on capwing.com is not over like three minutes, you can put text. So I know you guys have been seeing my little text at the top or at the bottom. I use capwing.com. So try to use, uh, that's a free app where you can put uh, some words on there. And there are other transcriptions. You can get into transcriptions on your videos too because people that are hearing impaired or have disabilities, they want to learn about your business as well. So try to take advantage of those free apps for video editing, and that should definitely help you. So everyone else, okay, so do you suggest branding on your own or hiring a company? If you have the time to do branding, here, let me give you guys some free advice here. Branding isn't, like, it's not necessarily um, fancy like a commercial. So for junk removal, if you guys are at your vendor's spot, and you're talking to a vendor and provided that you ask them for permission, you can literally just show a little video, like a little video of you going to your vendor site and picking up some products and services, you doing some accounting, you putting some junk, um, you know, picking up junk from, I don't know, a residential owner, homeowner, and going to the junkyard and throwing it in the junkyard and saying, hey, you know, having a long day here, it's sweating outside on a Sunday afternoon, you know, hope to help you guys soon, stay tuned to, for my next post. That's branding, and it can be so simple. It doesn't have to be all made up and fancy. People, people really like the raw images of people just, you know, a day in the life of what you do. It can even be a two-minute video of the day in the life of what iconic junk removal does every day. If you have the resources and you don't have the time, then you might want to hire a consultant or a company that can help produce. And if you kind of want to test the waters and see how it goes by yourself, you can just share little highlights of things that you do every day. Um, and again, people just want to see what you're up to. They want to see customer testimonials. They want to see why you started your business. What wakes you up? What is your passion? Why do you do what you do every day? And trust me, that's branding. It doesn't have to be fancy. The more fancier, the more suspicious the new people are going to be. But if it's raw, if it's authentic, if it's just you and your team in a short meeting talking about a marketing campaign or talking about, you know, maybe you're going to start uh, picking up junk in a new district in your city, that's branding. It's just showing who you are, what you do, why you do what you do every day. And the more of that people see every single day, the more it builds trust, the more it builds relationships. People buy people. Uh, people buy Michael Jordan because we all know he's a genius. People buy from McDonald's because a lot of people know they have the best French fries, right? Does Ronald McDonald look, you know, uh, attractive? Not to me. I used to be scared of him when I was a little girl. But we know that when we walk up in McDonald's, we get our food within less than 10 minutes. And those French fries are really great. So Tycho uh, Magson said, I've noticed with other photographers that they tend to pose behind the scenes something that I will be looking into doing. Yes, post behind the scenes because we all know that um, regular TV sitcoms are competing right now with reality shows and the Kardashians and the Housewives of Atlanta. Even though I don't sit there and I waste my time watching that stuff, it works. People really want to see the behind the scenes, who they are, the, the brand behind the actress, the brand behind the model, the brand behind the photographer, of the reseller, of the junk removal company, of the uh, graphic designer. They want to know who you are. And I know earlier um, the question came, do I have to show myself? It's all in how you feel comfortable. If you don't feel comfortable, use a mascot. Get a graphic designer to do a cartoon or just use a generic video with some nice uh, font and some nice uh, graphics and go from there. Uh, but the more personal that you can get, the more better. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to show your face, but you have to show something. So I hope that helps everybody. I'm so glad that I was able to answer all of your questions. Unless um, you don't have any more questions, I'll be uploading this video to some of you that came in a bit later on. And every morning at 7.45 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time, 9.45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'll go live and I'll be there to answer your question. So shortly after this, I'm going to do a survey. Let me know what you want to see next Monday, and I'll make sure to cover that in my next Instagram Live. Thank you so much for your time, everybody. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Uh, it looks like the quarantine is kind of changing up there. Uh, some of the businesses in my um, 
local uh, area are opening up. So try to get some sunlight and enjoy your, enjoy your family, enjoy your friends, and enjoy. Uh, stay healthy, stay safe, and take it easy, okay? And stay tuned for my content coming.